Hey everyone, it's the R. Sean. Welcome to another edition of Great Sales Leaders, where we talk to sales professionals, people in the sales world about what they're doing and how they're leading the sales industries and tips that you can use in your sales business, uh, whether you're a selling representative or a manager of a sales team. So uh, with me today is my regular co-host, Shannon J. Gregg and Meredith Elliott Powell, who speaks to lots of organizations about getting their sales teams in gear. I've seen one of her presentations. She kicks it up to high gear, and she really knows how to get things connecting. So she's agreed to drop some tips for us today. So we'll be jumping in on that. For those of you who don't know me as well, I'm the Arshon, Arshon McBride. I am a corporate lawyer by training, working with businesses on ownership and control of their business. I also do a lot of speaking and consulting about the future of business, including time management, uh, sales, and how do you get your organization going the direction you want to go that's going to survive and thrive in the long term. Co-host Shannon J. Gregg, sales and productivity systems, CRM, getting your organization, getting the data they need, getting where they're going. That's our background. Meredith, as I mentioned, does a lot of speaking. Very, very regular on the circuit. So she sees all kinds of organizations. So today she's agreed to give us the lessons from what she's seeing out there. Drop your comments below wherever you're watching, whether it's on one of our LinkedIn feeds, whether it's the Great Sales Leader YouTube channel, wherever you're at, we do read those comments. We sometimes invite people on as guests if they have great comments. And we remind you, we don't do investment advice. We don't do legal advice on the show. Everything here is just for your education. So with that, welcome to the show, Meredith. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. It's good to see you. Yeah, uh, happy so, holidays and all that good stuff. Yes, I know. We're wrapping up 2018. We're getting ready for 2019. This is usually a time where people get a little introspective. They start thinking about what the future is and you know how to adjust and probably getting some new quotas, which are probably higher than last year's <laughs> quotas. <laughs> so what are you seeing out there as you're talking to organizations and working with sales folks? You know, what, what, what's the pressures now and where are we headed? Well, I think the biggest thing that I'm seeing is the fact that everybody is worried about the market and the economy as we mm -hmm. roll into this year. You know, all the gurus and experts say that, that um, if we hit a recession, it'll hit somewhere around the end of 2019, 2020. And I don't know if it matters or it hits or not, because everybody seems to be worried um, about it. So the pressure seems to be on just as we start to kick into the new year. Yeah, and I think we're seeing that with the trends. People are starting to really get concerned about the numbers. Uh, one thing we've talked a lot about, you know, is automation changes coming, and the fact that the recession gives companies a, a reason and an excuse to uh, change things up, right? Yeah, absolutely. I think that um, you know, I think if if I'm a salesperson and I'm listening to this uh, to this session right now, this program, and I'm starting to think about 2019. The things you need to be thinking about is number one is self-reliance. I think it's going to be up to you to figure out how to grow and meet your sales quota. Because I think the pressure's just going to come on from um, corporate. They're going to give you the same goals that they've always done. But it's going to be up to you to figure out how you're going to take it up a notch this season. Yeah, and that means using both if you're getting internal training or resources, you know, you're having people like Meredith come visit your organization, you know, use the most out of that you can get, ask the tough questions, really tune in on it and get it. But if not, you've got to go find the resources, right? Absolutely. And I think, I think one of the most important things you've got to do is start January strong. Mm -hmm. um, I just sent out, um, I do a, a big webinar every year called the New Year's Resolutions, the things you need to know to make 2019 rock. And yesterday I dropped in the mail 150 invites. It's how I start the year every year to make sure I am calling right off the bat because holiday season tends to be a dead calling season. Mm -hmm. Next week will be another dead week if you don't grab it and do something with it now. Absolutely. And people are working, right, Meredith? Yes. We're working. Here we are. <laughs> All exactly. my emails got answered yesterday. They're around. So now, yes. now is definitely the time to be that one that stands out. Pick up the ball. Oh, yeah. You know, you know, Shannon, you're so right because your competitors are not calling right now. Well, and, and this is time, you know, we talk a lot about relationship selling. This is time for relationship selling, right? People don't want another cold sales call during the holiday season, but they'd love to connect with an old friend. They'd love to chat about, you know, what their goals are for next year, right? So I think part of it's the framing of how do you do that. Absolutely. I think, you know, I honestly, someday I'm going to write a book on how just to use holidays to increase sales because holidays are my favorite times. I mean, right now for New Year's, you could just 
give a call and say, happy holidays, happy new year. Know you're ready to get started on 2019. I want to set up a meeting. Let's connect as soon as you get back into the office. I want to see what I can do to make 2019 rock. It is the right. easiest excuse in the world to get in the door and help your clients. Right. And, that, and that's non-intrusive, right? You're not bothering anybody. Shannon? We're not. No, I'm saying sign me up for the pre-sale. I'm not... <laughs> I am co-signing on that idea, Meredith, and I, I want to read that book as soon as you write it. <laughs> I totally agree. I think, I think a lot of people say, okay, fourth quarter, going into fourth quarter always feels so dead and so overwhelming because you're looking and saying, if I'm only 65% to goal, how am I going to do 75% in the last quarter when we have Thanksgiving, we have holidays? And, and I think now's the time to say, my first quarter goal, if you can get yourself more than 25% of your goal in the first quarter, you are running on all the rails and now's the time to set that up. Yeah, it's you know, it's it's kind of like um, it's kind of like eating healthy in January or not eating healthy in January. If you eat healthy in January, you're probably going to do it all year long. If you blow it in January, you're not. And it's the same with sales. But but again, Shannon, I think you've made such a great point, and that is that our competitors walk away from the holiday season, and half of January tends to be a dead month because because people don't want to bother people. But you have got to start strong, and this year more than ever because the pressure is going to be bigger. And I, I fall into that camp where I think it is going to be a challenging year for a multitude of reasons. And you better come out of the gate with some really strong sales behaviors. I think that's right. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of of the feeling that we are headed to a slowdown here. I mean, the, the people are just the fact that people are talking about it probably pushes us that direction. That's exactly right. And, you know, so it's kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy. As soon as people start thinking they're slowing down, people are going to start pulling their budgets back a little bit. Um, it's time to have the relationships and it's time to be in there having those discussions with people and really learning what their deep issues are beyond the surface and mm -hmm. to understand what their true needs are and how can you offer value to them, right? I mean, you know, they, they may have a tighter budget, but you can say, hey, look, I can do A, B, and C to you for, you know, less than what you're paying with my competitor or whatever that conversation is. But what is really their need for the next year? Well, you know, and I think, I mean, I think you make such a great point too, is that the irony is that a tough economy is one of the best times to sell because your customers have pain. Mm -hmm. And when customers have pain, they have need. And, you know, to your point, Sean, you've got to get in there. You've got to have that conversations and you've got to identify it. Technically, when we um, head into a downturn, as you said, whether it's a self-fulfilling prophecy or it's real, um, that, uh, that, that, we tend to back away when now is the time to, to, to move into it because our customers are going to need us more than ever. It's not that they're not going to spend money. They're just going to be smart about how they spend it. And we've got to be having those, we've got to be having those conversations. Right. The auto uh, spend. Everybody should slowly. write that down, write down what Meredith said. <laughs> customers have pain and when yes. they have pain, they have need and we want to step in and be their trusted advisors. Yeah, well, yeah. Write that down of, and keep it on your computer. <laughs> yeah, a, lot of, a lot of movement in the down economy because they're going to start shuffling, right? They've got tighter budgets. They've got to still keep the business going. So it's a great opportunity to get shuffled into a new spot and to get, get people to pay attention to you because maybe they're not out doing as much with their customers. So they've got time to look at their internal operations. And so, you know, this is opportunity time, I believe. Yeah, one thing I think is so key, though, to remember, especially as you, as you move into times like these, is that the normal um, sales behavior is to become more aggressive and more focused on me meeting my goals because I've got pressure, right? I'm worried about the economy. I'm feeling this. But you have got to let that go. And you have got to really sell from a place of giving and not worrying about whether you get the sale. You've got to be all customer focused because imagine, you know, imagine Shannon, you're feeling the pressure of an economic pinch and I show up and I'm just trying to push a product on you. You are going to back away. But if I get in there and I'm really trying to understand what's going on with you, you feel a connection to me and I'm one of a hundred people calling on you. I'm the only one that it feels like I'm not trying to shove a product down your throat. So you've really got to go back, Sean, to your point, that relationship selling. Mm -hmm. Yep, exactly. And then part of that is just understanding, right? You got to open the conversation door. And I, I think, you know, right, people are going to be more sensitive to a pushy sale now because they're paying more attention to the details or listening to every word. They've got maybe a little more time. So now's the time to kind of I understand you. I know what you need. 
And wait a minute, you know, I mean, one, one big trend we've seen with automation now is everybody wants to speed it up, right? I mean, you're getting these emails on LinkedIn where, you know, you connect to them and the next, th next yeah. thing's a pitch, right? Well, yeah. slow down, understand them, then come to them from a place of, look, I've listened to you. I've heard what you've said. I've read what you've wrote. I've talked to you a couple of times. Based on everything I know, here's what I think might be your solution. That's going to be a, that's going to be a powerful sales pitch in 2019 and beyond. Yeah, I think, um, you know, I want to pick up on that point that you're talking about with that, uh, the LinkedIn sales pitch yeah. um, is, uh, is, you know, you need to be for your existing customers, you need to be proactively taking care of them. But for people you don't know, um, this is, a, you've got to increase your networking efforts. You've got to realize that you've got to build relationship and trust. It's, it is a longer sales process with somebody who is brand new mm -hmm. because again, I don't have to have you to buy the sale. So the only reason I'm doing business with you is because I like you. I, I feel connected to you. I trust you. And you can't do that by one connection on LinkedIn and asking me to buy your product. Right. And that's the big mistake that a lot of people yeah. are making out there. And, and <laughs> the other thing is too, when you, when you make one of those pitches, and I've said this before in other contexts is you make these pitches on LinkedIn and then now you've burned that relationship. That person may not have been your customer anyway, but they may have been a great referral source yeah. and now they just want to disconnect from you and not hear from you ever again. Yeah. I've got six in my inbox um, right <laughs> yeah. now. Well, yeah. They're, they're, yeah. I just, I just delete them. Well, we had, uh, we had Shannon's friend, Mario Martinez, uh, on for a segment the other day. And Mario now apparently takes and posts these terrible pictures <laughs> he gets and puts them online so that people can read them. <laughs> I love that. I, I love that. <laughs> so yeah. he copies and pastes it, whether it's because they have dear first name or whatever issue is. He highlights them. And, you know, we laugh about it here, but that's what your customers are thinking. They're mm -hmm. laughing inside or they're frustrated. One or the other, you're, you're right. burning that bridge. Yeah, neither, and you're right, and neither one is good. Right. You, you want to make them laugh, but you want to make them laugh because of genuine humor and genuine connection, not because you sent them something stupid. Yeah. Shannon? <laughs> I was just going to ask Meredith, so, so tell us, like, what, what are one of the really positive attributes you're seeing in really successful salespeople or sales leaders? So what's that one sort of common denominator that you're saying, mm -hmm, I see what's making these people successful now? I would, I would really say that there's two biggies that stand, um, that stand out for me. Um, one is that they're heavily focused on building the reputation to dominate the market. So they're putting so much value in terms of resources and information out there that when you think about all the people in their market, they're sort of the one that bubble to the top. Um, and so you get that a lot of um, free resources and just really sort of position themselves um, as the expert. And then the other of that is that they're, um, they're ridiculously easy to do business with. They're not putting any obstacles up. For instance, their contact forms are simply your first name and an email. They're not your first name, your last name, your telephone number, you know, how long you've been in business, what position you hold. I mean, you know, so they're, they're like looking at their businesses and removing every single barrier to entry. And those two things together, I think are really making, um, are making salespeople very successful. And I, I, do, I do see the winner-take-all segment, you know, and we, we talked a little earlier about self-reliance. I wanted to zoom in on that a little more and talk about kind of how that's becoming so important. And I'll give you a plug, Meredith. I know you put great videos and great value out there on LinkedIn. I see your videos come across, so people go check that out. But what else? What else is out there, Meredith, for the some person that's maybe in an organization, they, they're trying to grow, but they're not getting the support they need, or they, they're, not, they're not really feeling like they're growing as quick as they could? What, what, what do you recommend for them? Um, about a year ago, I wrote a blog um, called What to Do When Your Sales Manager Sucks, which, you know, my mother would roll over if she knew I titled <laughs> something that. But, but it's true, right? I mean, every single one of us who have been in sales, you can count on one finger the number of times you have had an amazing sales leader. And, um, and I think that salespeople all too often fail because they're expecting their sales manager to do what legitimately a sales manager should do, but it almost never happens. Yeah. So the first thing I think is to acceptance that you're not going to get the leadership and the support from the direction that you're expecting to get it. Let it go because that is energy that is wasted that will keep you from getting um, the sales. The second is that you do need to go find a mentor. If you're struggling or you need help or support in sales, 
whether that's somebody else in your organization that's really good at sales, whether it's somebody that's outside of sales, whether it's somebody that you choose to follow on um, social media. But people who are really genuinely good at, um, at sales, a lot of time have had a mentor or somebody who helped them in their lives and they're more than willing to turn around and give you some advice and give you some tips. And you can take all the sales training and all the sales education you want to in your lifetime, but there is something about going to somebody and saying, gee, Shannon, I just lost this deal and I don't know why. Will you talk it through with me? Right. That, that helps you to, to, you know, to, to learn um, those two things. So I would say just really letting go of what isn't working and grabbing the bull by the horns and saying, I'm going to find what I need to make it work. Yeah, I think that's, that's big. And, you know, and the other thing, and, and it kind of correlates to this, is you've got to get in front of this because what we're seeing with more and more sales organizations is they'll have people selling, 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 and then you don't invest in yourself. You don't grow. You don't, you don't get the new skills. Sales dry up and they say, you're gone. You know? yeah. And that's just, that's just a terrible place to be. And I expect more of that to happen as we get into these tighter budgets and less investment internally. Yeah, I think it's. I think it's going to be. Um, I think it's going to be a lot stronger. And I think there isn't. Um, I think there isn't enough acceptance of failure. Mm -hmm. I mean, I learn more from sales that I lose, far more than sales that I gain. And just that, even getting you know together three of your buddies, and you're going to get together for 20 minutes once a week and talk about a sale that you won and a sale that you lost, and just keeping that education um, going. Because I think as salespeople we forget what we're doing that's working and we focus too much on what isn't. And if you can learn from what isn't working and then learn to repeat what is, um, yep. you'll, you'll learn a lot. I think a great place to start is a review of 2018. Just look at the sales that you won in 2018, look at the sales that you lost and just try to figure out why you won what you won. Did you pick mm -hmm. the right target? Did you sell the right product first? What yep. was it? And then what caused you to fail and use that as uh, you know, a, a good model going into 2019. Yeah. Well, that's how I became a speaker is I did a study at the end of 2014. And I said, what's, what's creating a lot of sales for a little bit of time versus what's creating, nice. what's take, you know, and I, and I look backwards and I had spoke a few times, just randomly people had invited me to come in and speak at organizations. And I was getting clients from being on stage. And I said, well, I got to be on stage more. Yeah. And so, you know, I would have never figured that out had I not done that backwards study there's probably a couple of things you're doing that are leading to sales or that are working really well. And you, unless you step back and say, trace your customers, you may not realize it. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's amazing to me that we don't, but until you do the review, you don't notice. Yeah. It's a pattern. It's a, yeah. and sometimes a big pattern, right? I spoke three times in three years and I had three clients from it. And for, <laughs> for a lawyer, that's a good return on investment. So I was like, let's do more of that. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. I think Shannon? Meredith, yeah, I want to echo what, what Meredith is saying and, and just tell everybody a really nice way to go back and review is with your own personal advisory board. I think that cannot be understood enough. Yeah. When you develop that personal advisory board and, and make it people that you trust, they'll tell you, hey, that was a hero sale or yeah. that came because of something that was really outside of your normal market conditions. So you can start to use those attributes and you can use your CRM to pull those attributes out, but your personal advisory board are going to be the ones who take that fresh, clear look to say, here's how and why you won or lost that one. And here's the environment you can create so that the next time you go to a sale with these same attributes, you know what to do to win. Yeah. yeah. Oh, what, a, what a great, what a great point. Getting that outside perspective is huge. And that, and that ties back to your point. So mentoring too, right? I mean, mm -hmm. you can do a lot of training, you can do a lot of self analysis and I, I do recommend you do that. But at some point you also want to get that third party perspective because it's going to show you things that you're not going to see on your own. Yeah, I think um, a couple a couple years ago, I had a big failure. I mean, a big failure. And I was devastated. I mean, devastated. And I went to a mentor of mine who's been in the business a good 15, 20 years longer than, um, than I am. I mean, I was devastated to the point was, you know, I'm licking my wounds. I'm not sure I can get back up. Wow. And she just started, she walked me through it and just told me why I failed, which was a huge light bulb and that it was, it was such a, it was such an important mistake that I could, that I made, but I didn't, it was once she told me I wouldn't have to make it again. I mean, it almost said relief, really, but then she just started listing every mistake she'd made. Like, here's another one, Meredith. Here's another one, Meredith. That, that made mine look that big. Yep. And that if she could recover from 20 of these, 
I certainly could lick my wounds and get back up from one. And I think mentorship is important, you know, because, because of, because of that. Cause I look at, I look at young salespeople now, people in their twenties and it's comical to me what they get upset about because I'm like, Oh my God, that's nothing. Wait till you do this. And having somebody older than me, it was, I just can't tell you how invaluable that was you know, to spend an hour with me talking about every failure she'd had. And she kept, just kept going, do you want another? Do you want another? It just, it just put my head back where it needed to be. And I think mentorship is so important to that because sales is a, is a you know, you just get rejected and you mess up. And uh, it, it yeah. certainly, while it has its big wins, it has its humiliations. Yes. Yeah. What else yeah. is big out there that we didn't ask you about today? Um, I think that, um, you know, something that this is kind of a new thing um, that I'm on, but, uh, but one trend that I'm seeing with salespeople is that, um, you know, salespeople have always been the lone wolf. As long as I'm out there, I'm making my sales quota, I'm doing my thing, I am in control of my destiny. But now all of a sudden, um, salespeople are dependent upon the customer service team, the operations team, and everybody inside the organization. I call it, this is the year that you can't screw up. Like yep. if I make a perfect sale um, and then I bring them inside and Shannon, you're operations and Sean, you're the customer experience team and Shannon, you're rude and Sean, you're lukewarm. I'll never get back in that yep. door. Yeah, well, and we're seeing more and more organizations that are compensating based on retention. Yes. Uh, you know, in addition to the initial sale. And some are putting, I talked to a salesperson before, they're getting more money from retention than they are from initial sales. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So this is the year that you are, um, you are dependent upon everybody in your organization being as focused on sales as you are. And one, I think that's a big paradigm shift for, um, for salespeople. It's also difficult because they're not in control um, of it. So if you're a salesperson listening to this, um, either go talk to your you know, operations head or your sales leader about what you can do to really get the team on board. If that's too big for you, then talk to those people that you work with most intimately in the organization and start to help them, ask them what they need from you to yeah. really be as proactive with customers as possible. And now you are truly part of a team. And think about it because one screw up is going to cost you a customer for life. Yep. Yep. So Meredith, I mentioned earlier, you have a great LinkedIn page. You have a lot of great valuable tips you give. How else do people find you and hunt you down if they want to bring you in to speak or talk to their organization or help them in some other way? Well, the biggest thing is to get on my website, valuespeaker.com, just the word value and speaker.com. And I would love to invite anybody to who's listening to sign up for our webinar on December the 31st at noon Eastern, where we're going to talk about the New Year's resolutions, the things that you need to know to succeed in 2019. 19 from a sales perspective. Wonderful, folks. Well, thanks for joining us, Meredith. Folks, we love your comments. Drop them. I think we'll all be reading them. We'll be checking them out and responding as, as, as we see stuff and they'll give us some ideas of what you need in the future. I want to remind you to check out our great sales leader YouTube channel. And then also you can see our ups, ah, our upcoming episodes <laughs> and our past episodes at Sales Leadership Done Right. So check that out, folks. Thanks for joining us, Meredith. It was a lot of fun. Thank you. Happy New Year. Watch and pat yourself on the back for doing the hard work for the future. Thanks for being here.